Green Bay recovers. When you talk about the attitude that's necessary as far as an offensive team goes, watch how long the Packer blockers stay on the Jet defenders. There's very little reaction time. The Jets aren't getting off when they need to get off, and that fumble was not the case of a hit. Edgar Bennett went to jump and just didn't take the ball with him when he jumps. Watch out. The oops, see you later. Knee hits the ball. Ball goes out. And he gets lucky because the ball got kicked back into his arm. And they're spotted at the 12-yard line, so it is third down and one. I'm going to reset the clock. And 50 seconds and counting. Time remaining. We're in the first period. Now Darrell Thompson and Edgar Bennett, the two running backs. to Bennett with Thompson leading the way and they needed a yard and it's going to be close may not have picked it up I don't think he got it I think he scored it forward of the marker after they blew the whistle it's short it's fourth down nice job we talk about the attitude of that Jets defense last time they they faced this offense having sort of the uh, dictation dictating to the offense well, right there on that play Greg Robinson's defense stuffed it inside that's exactly what he has to see running the ball that kind of attitude that is the end of the first period with the Green Bay Packers leading Shaman nothing don't go away we'll be back in just a moment at fullback watch his lead block if there's something this team really needs that's a rough tough lead block and fullback and Marvin Jones stuffs Thompson right in the hole and Bennett cannot get that first down and if you're a defense you don't worry about lead blocks if they don't have them you attack running backs and that's just what Marvin Jones did Greg Hendrick the Packer putter shaken up earlier in the period he's back to kick Clifford Hicks is the third man for the Jeff oh he gets a great one away Takes a Green Bay roll and will be down about the 18-yard line. Corey Harris was there. Woo! Well, Mike Holmgren might just have to have this kid blindsided every week before he starts kicking. And Reggie White is going to be after Boomer Esiason here. This is a situation that Reggie gets into a nickel when it happens. Reggie comes up the field right here. Brown comes up and they get in to Boomer's face. Here's the look you're going to see more and more of. Reggie White and Sean Jones. What that does, Jones will stunt. Reggie will come around. Brown will come here. Gives you the same inside pressure, but a different look. And a great matchup one-on-one -on -one with Duffy and White. That was a 70-yard kick. And the Jets go to work from their own 18-yard line. And they are going to lose yardage right off the bat back to the 15. Johnny Johnson stopped by Yurkovich. A loss of three. It'll be second and 13. This is called stunting and going after the quarterback. But if somebody with the ball comes by you, get them. They're coming after Boomer. You saw Pipe run, Pop run by him. Yurkovich runs by him. But they have such penetration. When you start dodging linemen and linebackers in the backfield, you automatically think, uh-oh, go to the ground. Johnny Johnson, the remaining back in his second and 13. And Johnson carries. And he is going to lean for two yards, and that will be it. It'll be third down and 11. And that puts just that situation Boomer doesn't want to be in. Third and long. And that's set up by an aggressive Green Bay defense in an offensive line in the last two plays of the New York Jets that is just getting pushed back into Boomer's lap. Pushed back in his lap, translated on a passing down to how much time does Boomer have in the pocket. Let's watch. The pocket watch. And that's an early start. It doesn't start officially until the snap. Just check, checking it out to make sure that it's working. Third down and 11. Boomer to throw. He has great protection. Now he rolls and now he pump fakes up the sidelines and he has upended at the 25 yard line. Oh! He is hit by Doug Evans. He goes through the air and he's about a yard shy of the first down it'll be fourth down even if that hurt boomer is not going to let it show that's the kind of toughness boomer has he's being very aggressive 
Plays like that will drive a head coach nuts when you're kind of franchise guy in the quarterback position. Starts flying around and laying his body out because defenders are drawn to that. Kind of like moths to a light. If a quarterback wants to be tough, defenders love to give him that opportunity. They might have laid dead at the 23 yard line, so it is fourth down and five. And Brian Hansen will be kicking. Robert Brooks is the return man. And here's the kick, and it is a good one. And Brooks goes back and takes it at the 21. Slips, he's wrapped up right there. Putting a little bit on the wet side, Anthony Pryor there for the Jets. The Packers lead it 7 0. We'll be back in a moment. Hansen and to the victors go the spoils. And they enjoyed at the tailgate party outside of Lambeau Field. That's part of the tradition of football here in Packer country. Well, the first possession, the Packers got the ball, Charlie, ran it back down the field, threw it at will. And really, the Jets look stumbling. So far, the last couple times the Packers have had the ball, they have not been able to take care, take advantage of Terrell at safety for Ronnie Lott and Marcus Turner at corner. Bill Clark comes out throwing on first down, and he fights it into a crowd. He was low. The pass is incomplete. Kicks it away. We'll go to New York. Here's Greg with an update. All right, Charlie, the Battle of L.A., the Raiders and the Rams. Here's Chris Chandler of the Rams from 22 yards out, finds Flipper Anderson near the back of the end zone. The extra point, and it's a tie game in the second quarter, 7-7. Back to Charlie and Randy. As we come back, Green Bay leading the Jets, 7-0. That was the first incompletion. And Harv has thrown in the ball game, and it is second down and 10. Off to the second back to Reggie Cobb. And Cobb is going to get to the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be all. So it is third down and ten. As you say, the New York Jet defense, they pride themselves this year on being very physical, and now they're starting to pick up the flow of the ball game. I think you're right. And in that opening series, they were thinking too much about the defensive and the, change. The key, Charlie, to that defense is Tony Casillas, who made that last tackle, and Donald Evans inside. You can disrupt this style of offense with aggressive, penetrating defensive tackle play. Green Bay now with four wide receivers. It is third down and ten. As Brooks goes across the back of the quarterback five, he rolls right side on it. 29-yard line. The pass is going to be complete right at the 30, but that will be shy of the first down as he goes to Terry Mickens. That is Mickens' first reception of the ball game and only his second of the year. It'll be fourth down, and Hendrick will come in, believe me, to kick it away. The last time, 70 yards. Not a bad average. And we saw earlier his career long, Clifford Hicks is the return. Bothered by a bad ankle. The Jets say we know that he can catch it. Don't know if he can return it or not. He is still hobbled. But they're happy to have him there. They didn't think early on in the week that he would be there. And it's another great one. Whoa, what an exhibition. This one is taken at the 13 yard line. Up to the 20 and then pulled down around the 23. We'll step aside with Green Bay out in front, 7 0. Don't go away. There'll be something different about you to wear those things. <laughs> <laughs> Jets first down. The Murphy step throws down. Johnny Johnson incomplete. Second and ten. Jets struggling on offense. Let's take a look at their first four possessions. They have only a pair of first downs in the ballgame. And these 16 plays and four punts are as a direct result of the offensive line for the New York Jets getting shoved back into the backfield, really into Boomer's lap and into the running back's lap. They have got to get something going running-wise. If you can't run the ball against the Green Bay Packers defense, you are in some serious, serious trouble. This is the best run defense in the NFL, but there's no excuse. You've got to get it going. Red Baxter is the remaining back, a double tight end set. Boomer throws for side pass is complete on the quick out. It's only going to be good for maybe two yards to Rob Moore. Moore, the number one receiver for the Jets with 45 catches coming into the game, and Terrell Buckley was there to wrap him up. Buckley, by the way, has been struggling this year. Well, one of the big surprises early in the game is the fact that 
that Moore, as tall as he is at six foot three, number 85 there, has not been able to take advantage in that cushion and the uh, coverage of Buckley. Herman Moore, the Lions just ate up this defense last week. Moore is very similar physically. You got to give him that chance to get off and go up to the ball. He had eight receptions, more than 150 yards, most of it against Buckley. Rumor throws and a stretch by Rob Moore, and it could be enough for the first down. He needed eight, and he may have gotten that plus a yard. This time they're going after Doug Evans. Well, the good thing about that play is Boomer and this offense were right in their rhythm. One, two, three, drop and fire this ball out to Moore, and then it's just second effort to get the first down. Working there against Evans, 33. But either side this guy goes to at six foot three. Rob Moore's got an advantage on the quarterback. They needed eight. They got nine first down, Jess. Third first down of the ball game. They trail seven nothing. We're in the second quarter. And the handoff to Baxter and he is stuffed as the Packer defensive front four stuffs the offensive line of the Jets. Let's go to New York for an update. Baxter. All right, Charlie, more action in Anaheim between the Raiders and the Rams. Jeff Hostetler of the Raiders, 10-yard scoring strike to Rocket Ismail. And the Raiders, with the extra point, jump on top 14-7 in the second quarter. Charlie? And in case you joined us, Green Bay jumped on top here, 7-0 in the opening drive. Touchdown game with just under 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. That has been the only score in the ballgame. And then Jeff. Sets throws underneath the coverage. He goes to James Thornton. Thornton, the number two tight end behind Johnny Mitchell. Thornton, a career-high six reception against Buffalo last week. He has this one here. I keep talking about the pocket. Watch the pocket form. And Boomer Esaias and sit in here and watch all the trouble happening around him. But this is a good example of physically the Jets line taking control of the Packer defense, giving the quarterback some time if they can do that. They can move the ball. You have to protect, and you must be patient. This defense does not give up any big plays. Third down and two. First down and breaking clean is Richie Anderson down the sideline. Cuts back at the 20. He's to the 10. Cuts back again at the 5. Finally dropped at the 3-yard line. That was third down and two. And only the 11th carry of the season for Richie Anderson. And this is just pure and simple. A nice move by Anderson and very poor defense and tackling by the Green Bay Packers. This is a quick flip outside. They've got Sean Jones as a stand-up defensive end. Makes him very easy to hook. You see Leroy Butler came in there and missed that tackle. And I just said this defense doesn't give up big plays. Any defense gives up big plays when it can't tackle and it stands around. Big play, 55 yards. And Green Bay will take a timeout. That stops the clock. 7.45 left to go in the first half. You know, Ronnie Lott, who's not in this game for, for the Jets, is one of the greatest safeties tackling ever. Watch Butler lurch duck his head goes down that is how coaches teach defensive backs not to tackle you keep the head up you watch the waist you explode through the guy but you saw the balance of richie anderson in his second year from penn state as he came over the top finally cut down at the three yard line where's first down and goal to go oh, so you're, you're taking that the other guy gets gets paid to defense aren't you, you about <laughs> And we get paid, too, as tonight, prime time, action back here on Indigo go Jets. <laughs> the Packer defense could have used a cyborg war machine on that <laughs> last one. You saw, you know, Sean Jones standing up. They caught. They didn't tackle. They have to penetrate here. Look for a quick hitter inside. Johnson and back to the running back. And it's not there. Johnny Johnson, bad toe, hamstring and all, is going to lose a yard to the four, second down and go. And he's going, going against John Yurkovich, bad body and all. And I talked to this guy before the game, and it's, it's good to know that even the way I look, I maybe could still play in this league, but uh, this is a guy that is just physically able to take care of offensive linemen, and he's one of the main reasons, along with Reggie White and Gilbert Brown, you want to attack this defense 
at it. Don't let them push you back. You've got to hit him quick. Second goal for the yard line. Play action fake. Boomer to throw. Has pressure. He's throwing this one away. It went high back edge of the end zone. He was almost a sandwich as he had Packer pressure from the front side and the back side. And he's throwing it away. Third and goal. Well, he tries a little play action fake, seeing who he can fool and hold, but it isn't sold very well. That's a half-hearted fake by the running back. And Boomer just flips that thing out when he feels the pressure and sort of hangs Mitchell out to dry in the back of the end zone. Hoping against hope that Johnny Mitchell could go up and put it down. Nobody else could get to it. It's third down goal to go. Three wide receiver. Backs to the remaining back and the sellout Packer crowd into this ball game as always. And a straight shot up the middle. There's a flag on the play. Baxter is hit right at the line of scrimmage. The first decision is the fly. Well, the only decision on this play is really the flag. It's against Green Bay. That is the only decision as far as if that had been the other way. Pete Carroll gets this kind of field position. He's got to kick a field goal. If they don't get in on third, you kick the field goal. You don't go for it on fourth. Defense number 33, lined up in the neutral zone, penalized half the distance to the goal line, repeat the down, third down. Third down, goal to go, two-yard line, the call on Doug Evans. Isn't that the way it always happens, Charlie? The pick and shovel guys inside do the penetration, do all the hard work, and it's one of the little lightweights outside, can't even see where the ball is, and lines up offsides. So you repeat the down, third down and two. You have got to test, I guess, now the outside. They've proven they can't get through inside. The most field is to the right. Third down, goal to go. Boomer Rowe being chased from behind, and he throws it away. Boomer knew he was out of time, and he was also out of real estate. It'll be fourth down, goal to go. They'll go with a field goal attempt. We have a jet down. Let's tackle Jeff Criswell down, holding that left elbow. Watch two things. Boomer and the offense on this replay go into the short side of the field. There's no penetration, no pressure, but look at the job in the end zone of the Jets defenders. I mean, the Packer defenders. There is nobody open. There is at least two green jerseys on every white one. And this play got Boomer's attention because watch his eyes as he heads to the sideline. He's looking for any friendly face, anywhere to throw the ball, because guess who's chasing him? The big guy. Reggie White, and you could hear his footsteps. You can hear him breathing from that close. Yes. Jeff Criswell, the offensive left tackle. Clock is stopped with 6.30. That is the time remaining in the first half. The Packers are up by a score of 7 and nothing. Let's check out now the ticker. San Diego coming from behind to defeat Kansas City. A big win for the Chargers on the road. They've been struggling recently. Chicago defeats Miami by three. And so uh, that helps the Jets as they now with a victory could pull within one in their race in the East. Cleveland. Try to make sense Cleveland's of those for two real, teams. aren't well, they? Try to make sense of those yeah. two teams. Yeah. New, England, New England, Minnesota, big win as far as the Packers are concerned. Minnesota coming back to the pack. Well, both this division, the NFC Central, and the AFC East getting a little uh, jumbled up. At now the return men for the Green Bay Packers. Harris on the near side, Jordan on the far side. Come to the 40 yard line. Free kick out of bounds. By rule, the ball is placed 30 yards from the spot of the kick. First and 10, Green Bay. Great field position for Brett Favre and this offense. Mike Hornman's got now his entire playbook to open up in front of him. And look for the Green Bay Packers to keep running the ball at this defense to make the play action pass more viable and get Sterling Sharp involved in this game. Why is Lowry, try Lowry trying to kick away from Corey Harris or Charles Jordan? I think that was just sort of a hook. <laughs> he just didn't hit that one. He wanted to low and line it, and it's low line left. Green Bay with the first down. Play action fake by Clyde. Buys time, lots of time, far side. And he overthrows his tight end, Edwell. Bad 
throw. It'll be second down and ten. He has got this guy wide open. West is sitting there all by himself. And if there's one thing this offense is really missing, in my opinion, it has got to be the tight end. They've had Jackie Harris here in the past, who was a real threat inside to a defense. But here's a case of the defense biting, biting on the play action and then just the quarterback uh, having sort of a, a general uh, brain cramp that just doesn't get the ball to the receiver. Second and ten, there's a lot of moisture here. Does that affect the throw? I don't think so, not at this point. Little swing right side in the flat is pulled in by Bennett, and he is pulled down at the 41 yard line. You know, moisture in the air and moisture on the ground, if it's not pouring rain like that Monday night Brett Favre played in. That's just sort of one of those, that's my story and I'm sticking to it excuses. You know, it sounds good. Third down and nine at the 41. It's always fun to talk to Brett Favre. No, he really, he's, he's a guy that has retained his personality. Mike Holmgren's had to sort of, you know, put the saddle on this guy and try to tame him because he was really kind of a wild man when he got here. But you want to tame him, but you don't want to take all the crazy out of Brett Favre. That's what makes him special. Third down and nine, both backs in the block. Some more time, slips the tackle. He does, he does a 360, and then he is down at the 45, and then he tries to crawl for one more. And he just kind of slipping and turning and tries to buy something. He had a lateral in mind at one time, decided, I better not. There's a little of that crazy out of Brett Favre uh, doing the curly shuffle out of the three stooges here. Just <laughs> circle and circle and go back and he is not a threat to kill you running. He's a threat to move around in the pocket and throw. But he had a pair of 360s, didn't he? Greg Hendrick will be kicking. His last putt, remember the 70 yarder? Well, his last one was 57 yards. And here's another great one. Oh, what an exhibition he is putting on. And it is into the end zone barely, just by a yard. We'll step aside. Packers lead it 7 3 a putting exhibition. Well, I think the big mistake the Jets made early was we're really hitting this guy and hurting That's us. That's right. They made him mad. The Packers defense has shut down the Jet offense except for that one play of 58 yards by Richie Anderson. Really, outside of that, they've got about 28 yards rushing. But uh, well, the key right now for Boomer is to at least have the implied threat of running the ball inside. If they aren't worried about running the ball inside, this defense will collapse the pocket on Boomer. Boomer also has penetration by the defense, but no tackling to back it up. And Johnny Johnson does not have very much quit in. Brad Baxter and Richie Anderson are now the running back. Moore goes across in motion. Asias in the throw. Pump fake fires quickly, and it is pulled in at the 24-yard line. And that will be a first down. That is the fourth first down in this drive. Rob Moore with the reception. George Coons covered him immediately. They're well inside of Nick Lowry's field goal range here. So, you know, Boomer just has the has the patience of the best of them right here. He's got all his time out. So, you know, here's the deal. You want to look for a matchup. If you can get a physical mismatch, mismatch with one of your wide receivers, maybe more deep against the Buckley, you want to take a shot into the end zone. Hard Monk wide through the near side. And Boomer hands off to Anderson, and he takes a straight shot up the middle. He'll go to the 20-yard line, so it'll be second down in six. And we have a timeout. One minute, 15 seconds left to go, first half. Time, it's the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Greg Gumbel and Mike Ditka will bring you up to date with scores and highlights of all the action from around the NFL. And we've had some very interesting action today. We really have. You know, Mike Ditka did a, a nice interview with Reggie White before the you know, NFL Live today. And, and this is a Reggie White type of a, a, a situation. Reggie White makes big plays at big times. A big defensive play here can knock him out of Lowry's field goal range. We have seen Reggie White and Sean Jones side by side only once defensively, and they got the sack, yeah, right? Just the one sack, and Fritz Schirmer hasn't gone back to it. Jones and right in, White and left in defensively. Assassin to throw. That low sidearm pass is caught for another first down at the 11-yard line. Another timeout. 
It'll be a first down. One, two, three, four. That is five first downs in this drive for the Jets. Rob Moore with the reception. Doug Evans is the man who covered him. Now a minute and eight seconds left. Well, good play calling by Ray Sherman, the offensive coordinator of the Jets, and, and poised by his quarterback, Boomer Esiason. He's getting the protection, and he's not getting greedy. Very important there. He was willing to stand back there, hold the ball, and wait until his receiver came open. There's Ray Sherman in the middle of the picture right there. Came out of that West Coast San Francisco offense, and uh, it's been a real melding and mixing of this offense. It's sort of what the Jets used to do by pounding the ball and trying to mix in the, the medium passing type offense that Boomer was used to in Cincinnati and then here with the Jets. Boomer told us that Rob Moore was quickly becoming his go-to guy. He said he has probably improved more this year than any other receiver. Moore went out with four receptions, 26 yards in the ballgame, 49 catches on the year. But for this offense to become a real threat and a real big weapon for the Jets, Rob Moore has to take that next step up. He's a good receiver. He has the tools and the ability to be a great receiver. If he can step up to that level, then the Jets are a very good offense. The size in 9 of 16, 83 yards passing. throws very quickly in zone right at the corner touchdown New York Jets guess who Rob Moore his fifth touchdown of the year that might not be the step all the way up that he's looking for but it was a great job by Moore of concentration Boomer threw that ball in a pretty difficult uh, position and a nice job of concentration watch him Watch his eyes when he sees the ball as he sort of arms over on Evans, a little downfield contact, and has the presence to get in that one knee. What makes him a great leader? Just the fire. Just his ability to make things happen when they need to happen. An 80-yard touchdown drive in eight play. Lowry to attempt the point after. And it is good. And for the first time in the ball game, the New York Jets move out in front by a score of 10 to 7 over the Green Bay Packers with 103 left to go in the first half. And how has Boomer and this offense done it? They, they've done it with one big run, some good consistent running, and they've done it by not allowing this guy right there, Boomer Esiason, to be pressured and knocked on the ground. Since Reggie White and Sean Jones got on the same side and sacked him in a flash kind of a sack, he has not been pressured that much. He's had Holmgren in this offense do some very, very conservative play calling and go into the, the locker room at halftime and try to get Brett Favre in this offense more focused about what they're seeing from Greg Robinson's defense. So Nick Lowry will be kicking off, as you can see. The time here is oh, about 4.21, 4.22 in the afternoon. It is getting on the dark side, and it's still a lot of moisture in the air. The humidity, 90%. I don't think you had any more rain, though. We had some sprinkles kind of on and off that mostly before the ball game. How do you tell when it rains? I mean, it's, was it gray or grayer when it's in the rain? No, you put your hand out. <laughs> and if your hand goes back west. Jordan number 80 and Corey Harris number 30 are the deep backs on the return. And here is Corey Harris across the 30. He gets back at the 35 and then trips over his own player as he was making a cut around the 38 yard line. Victor Green was there to cover him for the job. We talked about I talked about the defense that the Packers needed to see to, to throw the ball down the field and try to get in some position to score. Most important was the field position for Brett Favre. He's got great field position now. He can just about do anything he wants to do offensively. If I was him and I was Mike Holmgren, I would get Sterling Sharp involved in this game. Sterling Sharp cannot lose his concentration and interest in this game for the Packers to win. Sterling over the last three games, only 11 receptions. Now that's a man who last year at 112 and the year before 108. But underneath the coverage to Reggie Cobb. Cobb out of the backfield, 50-yard line, first down. Gain of 12, Marcus Turner with the tackle. Mike Holmgren in this offense practiced this at least three times a week. Two-minute drill is a big part of this offense. Time to throw. Goes deep downfield, and there he is, Sterling Sharp. And it 
will be a first down at the 37-yard line. Sterling Sharp now with receptions in 97 consecutive games, and Green Bay will take a timeout. And he finally really gets involved in this thing, and uh, none too soon for the Packers. Watch him drive off hasty and then just settle into that spot in the zone. He knows the linebackers are inside. He knows the cornerback hasty is outside. And, you know, this is how this guy has made his living catching 112 and last year and 500 some odd numbers. Look at the numbers this guy's put up. Last two seasons, it's been incredible. His 51st catch of the year, we talked to him yesterday. You know, he and, uh, and his brother, who also wears number 84, Shannon, with uh, the Denver Broncos, and uh, he, Shannon closing on him a bit, so he wanted to resurrect the bet that they had a year ago. Well, Shannon went into this game with 46 catches, only trailing Sterling, Sterling by four, and uh, Sterling's not used to him being that close no. to him. I think last year they called it off after Sterling got about 40 ahead of him. <laughs> he did take a giant leap forward. It's a first down at the Jet 37 yard line. Fire to throw. Setsy goes deep and is Sterling and it is incomplete. Outstanding defensive play for Marcus Turner who closed on the pass. I tell you, he for a brief period of time before Turner could adjust, Sh uh, Sterling Sharp is wide open. Watch him break out right now. He's open, but a nice job by Turner adjusting back. I mean, Favre put that ball over the outside shoulder right on the sideline ready for the tattoo nice play Mark is of course drawing the starting assignment left corner Aaron Glenn inactive for the ball game Ronnie Lott also inactive out of the secondary for New York second down and 10 this one is off to Edgar Bennett Bennett will go out of bounds at the 32 yard line that will stop the clock he's going to pick up about five James Hasty was the man chasing him it'll be third down and five well, the way the balls have been punted around here today, you'd think there's helium in them. So I guess you're, you'd say Chris Jackie could slap one here from about 50 yards if he had to. But uh, ideally for Chris Jackie, you want to get more inside about the 40-yard line range. Jackie at Minnesota had a 50-yarder, but that was perfect conditions indoors. His longest this year, third down and five. And we have some jumping. Flags going here. Was that Sterling? That, uh, that was Sterling. He was in a hurry. Slot, jumped off sides. Ball start. Offense number 84 simulating the start of the play. Five yards. Still third down. What that five yard penalty does, Charlie, besides the field goal range, is it puts another play into the hopper. In that situation, Mike Holmgren could call something that in most offenses it'd be a tight end type pattern. In this offense, it's a Sterling Sharp hooking over the ball, little hitch for two yards, gets the first down, set it up. Now he's got to throw the ball down the field, down the middle of the field. Third down and ten. Barb sets up deep, slips out. He, but Fake is going to run for it. Stumbles heads for the sideline. He wants to stop the clock. He was in a hurry to get out of bounds at the 33-34 yard line. Mo Lewis, sprained knee and all. Helped out by the turpentine that his mom said a year ago was in hot pursuit. But now, Chris Jackie will come on with the field goal attempt. Well, Brett's, Brett's scrambling brain was about four steps ahead of his scrambling feet right there. He couldn't quite carry off what his brain wanted to do. And this will be a 52-yard attempt. Him directly, butter is the holder. Frank Winters, the snapper. And it has the distance. And it is no good. On a missed field goal, by rule, the ball is returned to the spot of the field goal attempt. And the Jets still have four seconds in case they want to take one opportunity and try and go along. Do you think they will, or will they just take a take the clock out? They're going to get the ball on the 42-yard line. Boomer, I, I don't think he can throw it down in a, a close enough proximity to the goal line to really make it a threat. I, I think he... Pete Carroll and he just sort of kneel down on the ball and head back to the uh, locker room. The formation looks remarkably like you're correct. And there he is. They'll take the count to make it official. And it is halftime at Lambeau Field. The Jets 10, Green Bay 7. Now let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York.